On December 1, 2021, then Prime Minister Boris Johnson told Parliament this. All guidance was followed uh, completely during number 10. One number 10 staffer told the BBC's Laura Kunzberg Johnson must have known the rules were being broken. Why is he denying this? When we've been with him this entire time, we knew that the rules had been broken. We knew these parties happened. A week later, responding to allegations of a Christmas party in December 2020, the Prime Minister said this. I have been repeatedly assured since these allegations emerged that there was no party. But there was a party. Sue Gray reports the event was crowded and noisy, such that some people working elsewhere in the Number 10 building that evening heard significant levels of noise, what they characterised as a party. Johnson repeatedly denied any lockdown law breaking. What I can tell you is that uh, all the guidelines were observed. I can tell you that I certainly break no rules. And then there was this. Will the Prime Minister tell the House whether there was a party in Downing Street on the 13th of November? Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, no, but I'm sure that it, and it, whatever happened, uh, the guidance was followed and the rules were followed at all times. But there was a leaving party on that date. This number 10 staffer was there. There was about 30 people, if not more, in a room. Everyone was stood shoulder to shoulder some people on each other's laps. This is what Johnson told Parliament in January 2022 about the now infamous Bring Your Own Booze party in Downing Street on 20th of May 2020, an event he attended. Number 10 is a big department with the garden as, as an extension of the office, which has been in constant use because of the role of fresh air in stopping the virus. And when I went into that garden just after six on the 20th of May, 2020, to thank groups of staff before going back into my office 25 minutes later to continue working. I believed implicitly that this was a work event. By that date, there had already been over 36,000 COVID deaths and England was in its first lockdown. Earlier that day, the then Prime Minister's principal private secretary, Martin Reynolds, had sent an email to about 100 Downing Street staff. Hi all. After what has been an incredibly busy period, we thought it would be nice to make the most of this lovely weather and have some socially distanced drinks in the number 10 garden this evening. Please join us from 6pm and bring your own booze. Johnson has always maintained he never saw the email. It's extremely unlikely he could have invited 100 people to a party in the Downing Street garden without the assent of the Prime Minister. At 5 p.m., one hour before the event began, then Culture Secretary Oliver Dowden had reiterated the rules at the government's daily COVID update. You can meet one person outside your household in an outdoor public place. This is how the BBC's Laura Kunzberg described the event which then took place. 30 people attended, including, according to two eyewitnesses, the Prime Minister and his wife, with a long table set out in the garden for drinks and snacks. We know this gathering broke lockdown rules because the Metropolitan Police issued Downing Street staff with a tranche of fines for attending the event. Johnson later added this. With hindsight, I should have sent everyone back inside. In other words, he conceded he was the person at this rule-breaking party who had the authority to break it up and that he should have done so guidance was followed uh, completely during number 10. The Metropolitan Police issued a staggering 126 fixed penalty notices to 83 individuals in Downing Street and Whitehall for lockdown law breaking. Then Prime Minister Boris Johnson himself received a fine relating to a gathering for his birthday in Downing Street on 19th of June 2020. After receiving the fine, Johnson said this. I've received a fixed penalty notice from the Metropolitan Police relating to an event in Downing Street on the 19th of June 2020. In all frankness, at that time, it did not occur to me uh, that this might have been a breach of the rules. Also fined was then Chancellor Rishi Sunak. He had previously told Parliament this. No, Mr Speaker, I did not attend any parties. 
The Prime Minister may have gotten off with just one fine, but we know he was at more than one of the law-breaking events, including the Bring Your Own Booze Party. Boris Johnson was also at this leaving do, where at least one other person was fined, so we know it was an illegal gathering. So Johnson's defence is essentially that he didn't understand the lockdown rules he helped to write and impose on the rest of us, which is, on the face of it, absolutely ridiculous. When Johnson told Parliament this, All guidance was followed uh, completely during number 10. Those words were clearly false, so the Prime Minister did mislead Parliament. The question a committee of MPs is now investigating is whether Johnson knowingly misled Parliament. We now have the first sign of their evidence, and it's not pretty for the Prime Minister. There is evidence that the House of Commons may have been misled in four different ways. A culture of drinking in the workplace in some parts of Number 10 continued after Covid restrictions began. Mr Johnson failed to tell the House about his own knowledge of the gatherings. That is because there is evidence that he attended them. Breaches of guidance would have been obvious to Mr Johnson at the time he was at the gatherings. The Privileges Committee says it's seen evidence that strongly suggests Covid rule breaches would have been obvious to Mr Johnson. But still Johnson claims he's innocent. There's no evidence to show that uh, I must have known, or I, I, I must have believed that uh, illegal events were taking place. It's because I didn't. And I thought we were fighting Covid to the best of our ability in very difficult circumstances, in number 10, in the cabinet office, uh, night and day. But new photos paint a somewhat different picture. Boris Johnson at events surrounded by people and alcohol. The MPs investigating him say he must have known this was breaking the rules. I think the evidence of wrongdoing by Boris Johnson is already pretty damning. Um, I think it's important to bear in mind that Rishi Sunak, um, at the time, was obviously very close to all of this and sat on his hands. Johnson is due to give evidence before the committee week commencing 20th of March. If he's found to have knowingly misled Parliament, he could be suspended as an MP or expelled, creating a by-election. But the committee's findings and any sanction on Mr Johnson would have to be approved by a vote in Parliament.